Okay, all right. Uh, so, you know, I first want to thank everybody for tuning in to United Masters TikTok Playbook webinar. Uh, my name is Ogden Payne and I am extremely excited to have our guest, um, Adi Ron. Adi, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, so, you know, kind of before we get started and, and really kind of dive into, um, you know, all things TikTok and really kind of breaking, you know, this, this app down, I think it's probably best if we take a step back, get a little bit of background on just kind of you, you know, uh, Flight House, kind of how everything kind of came to be, uh, you know, with, with you kind of going to Flight House. So if you could kind of just give us a little bit of background, that'd be great. Yeah, dude, I'm excited to be here. Um, I used to study the shit out of Steve Stout. So uh, it's it's cool to like be be doing this kind of stuff. So, but yeah, my name is Adi. I head the marketing department at Flight House. Um, I'm mainly looking over influencer uh, campaigns and things of that nature, but I have my hands in a lot of different, um, you know, buckets, whether it's helping with content, um, you know, helping artists with their content, um, you know, helping labels, independent artists, independent labels uh, create um, campaigns on TikTok and all that kind of stuff. So I joined Flight House in July 2019. Um, and you know, that was like right after old town road. So people started to pay attention a little bit to TikTok, but it wasn't like now where it's at now over the past, you know, 2020 was, was pretty wild for it and it's grown so much. Um, but, but yeah, just been here for a little bit. Um, you know, been, been running campaigns, uh, as I mentioned and, uh, and just, yeah, man, I'm excited to be here. Um, just a little bit of context, just about fly house itself as well is uh flight house is broken up into like two different segments so you know what i touched on is like the agency side and then we have our own uh we have our own presence on TikTok. uh we're around 27 million on instagram we're at like a million as well uh so we create original content we started on musically um so we were uploading we were basically a sounds page where we were uploading music to our page and that's where everyone was going to get their music to use in their videos um, and obviously, you know, as TikTok really became a thing, we had to transition and, um, you know, focus on our own original content. So, yeah, man, uh, that's that's the gist. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's perfect, man. That's perfect. Uh, and so, you know, I kind of want to start um, start here with things. Right. I think, um, you know, there's a very there seems to kind of be a very much like a, a binary way of, of looking at TikTok. Right. Like either it works or it doesn't like a, a song goes or it doesn't. But. I think there are just all sorts of things kind of like in between those two extremes um, that, you know, people can really find success and, and bring value on TikTok. So I really kind of want to take this beginner approach. Um, you know, let's say that you have this discography, like a, a discography of sorts. Right. And so what are some of these things that you're looking for in, in songs and how are you able to kind of identify what's going on within the song and, and why a specific portion of a song makes sense on TikTok. Like kind of, I guess, break down your, your thought process and your approach with that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you said that because I don't, I don't think I touched on that in my opening, but like, yeah, with, you know, our little bit, our processes, we'll get music and we'll figure out, you know, what's the best time code for TikTok. Um, kind of just what you mentioned. And so, you know, and then, and then building a campaign around that. So some of the things that like we're looking for, um, or I think, you know, just on TikTok that works. There, there's there's quite a few different things, but, and honestly, I wish I had a better like music vocabulary. I, I would probably be able to explain it a little bit better. Um, but, you know, the basic is like, you know, looking for, for certain like punchlines, right? Like if you're in a song and let's say the beat cuts out and you're like, shut up. And then like it comes, the beat comes back in and then the music starts like, you can easily, you know, millions of people could literally make a video and use the shut up because it's so general um, to be used in different formats, like a skit or like a text trend where it's like, you know, let's say you have text above where it's like, it's basically a meme, like when my mom, blah, 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 I don't know. And then it, and then there's like some punchline. Um, so those are like things we're looking for, um, you know, sounds in the music, like let's say there's a gunshot or like, you know, a slap or something like that where like, you know, you can emulate that in a video and use it. You basically can take a song and be like, okay, here's a clap in it. I can take that clap out of context of the song, but use it in this other context, which is like 
me and my friend talking and he says something to me and I use the clap as me slapping him. Uh, so like a sound effect there. Um, yeah, like repetitive beats are something that like, uh, like this is where the music vocab comes in. I don't know, but like if you have a song that has just like a consistent like hit, like people can do like photos and switch the, they switch the photos on like each hit, things like that. Um, if you have lyrics that are like directional uh, and like actually literally tell you what to do, then you can use that in a video as well. Like if it's, you know, super basic, it's like, you know, step to the right, step to the left. Or there was like this Jason Mraz song that was popping. Uh, I forgot the I'm your song. And it was like, you know, checking my tongue in the mirror. I, you know, whatever the lyrics are. And people were just literally doing that in the videos and it was telling them. So those are like a few things that like when we get music, we're looking for to identify, um, you know, how can we build a, a campaign around this? Um, and then, you know, obviously there's a lot of dance going on on TikTok. So like, you know, if there's just a really solid beat or something that's super hard, uh, that would just be fun to dance to. Um, you know, we're looking for all those, those kind of things like within the music. Yeah, no, okay. I, I love that. So I kind of want to stay there for, for a second, right? Because let's say, okay, I, I identify the, the portion of the song, right? And okay, this, this makes sense. I think I got, you know, the clip. I think I have everything um, ready to go. So then how do I actually build this campaign, right? Like what does execution actually look like? You know, let's oh. say, you know, there's a, a portion where uh, it makes sense for this to kind of be a dance challenge, right? Like a say so or something. So how do you make um, these moments spread? Because I think that's that's also kind of the, the question that a lot of people are looking to answer. Totally. I think um, I think one is like, you got to spend some time on TikTok yourself and just see what the fuck is going. Sorry if I cuss. I don't know. Uh, like, just see what's going on on TikTok. Like, what, like, you know, there's like, the, let's say there's a dance trend going on. A lot of people in their captions are tagging the dance credit. So like, there, somebody, whoever made the dance up, they're in the caption. So you can go and you can go into their profile. Like, are these, the, is this type of person just jumping on a bunch of trends or are they creating dances or things like that? And so I think it's spending time and finding people like that to then go reach out to, you know, as an indie artist, um, I would assume there wouldn't be a large budget. So, you know, identifying smaller creators that, um, you know, are super creative and they're not just jumping on the all the trends and just doing that kind of stuff like these people are actually being creative actually creating dances um whatever it is and so i think like identifying those kind of people uh is super helpful and then you know just reaching out and it's 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 a velocity and a it's a it's a numbers game right like if you reach out to 100 creators like maybe 90 of them or 80 of them don't even open the message but like 10 of them do i don't know and you just got to play that game and just keep reaching out to them and seeing if they'll um, you know, make videos to your, to your music. And so I think it's just, you know, what I used to do, even when I got, before I got here, was just like identify those kind of people, like start a, start an Excel sheet and just like put all these people in that you see that, uh, are doing that kind of stuff and just, and just, uh, dock them in there and then like keep reaching out to them. They probably have emails in their bios or you can DM them on Instagram, um, stuff like that. So, um, I think it's step one is just going on TikTok, figuring out what's going on. You know, if you have a hip hop song, like go find other songs that are similar to yours ish and go find the creators that were using those songs and then try to reach out to them for them to use your music. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so, OK, you know, I think something that's that's really interesting, too, is, OK, when you do the outreach, what is your what is kind of the the cold outreach uh message template right because i think especially if you don't necessarily have the budget how do you ensure that this is something that an influencer is going to want to do when there's no financial roi right so how do you provide that roi for somebody um if you don't necessarily have a, a big name or you know a, a relatively big song but you're trying to gain traction totally yeah i think you just got to like reach out to the creators that are that are smaller to get your stuff out there the beautiful thing about TikTok is most of the trends don't start from these big creators. Most of them actually do start from random people, smaller people. Uh, so identifying small people to, to hit up that, you know, aren't going to ask you for thousands of dollars for a post, um, just start reaching out there. 
uh, and building yourself there. And, and, and like I said, like if your song's dope, if the dance is dope, if the trend ends up being dope that that creator makes, you know, that video can just take off. We, you know, even if they have like the cool thing about TikTok is like you can have zero followers. And I know we'll probably get into this like later, but you can have zero followers and start an account today and get a million views on your first video. And there's no other platform like that. So, you know, identifying the like creators that, you know, can kind of, um, you know, fall on that same level as you. Um, and then as far as outreach, like, <laughs> like definitely don't just send the music and be like yo post this like you know do like a per I, i've even gotten stuff like that where people are like yo uh you know sending me music like le like campaign or like marketing need marketing and i'm like dude like do like a do like some like some kind of like message to me that's like you kind of have seen what i've done or like i don't know like being more personable for sure uh so you know reaching out you know being like i i like your content a ton like i'm a new artist like you know, things like that and just being personable in your message to them. Um, and yeah, there's going to be a tons of tons of no's and tons of like unread messages or not even open DMs. But like you only need you don't need that many to, to say yes for something to work if you have great music. So, yeah. Yeah. And you know what's interesting, too, is like, OK, you know, how, do, how are you able to kind of take the momentum from a TikTok campaign and translate it? onto other, you know, social platforms and streams. I think, you know, Flight House has done a really, really good job at that. Um, you know, obviously your, you know, your main presence starts on TikTok, but, you know, you're popular on Instagram, you're popular on YouTube. So like, what does that, um, I guess, what does that kind of strategy or approach kind of take and, and how, do, how were you guys able to do that? Yeah. Um, yeah. So what's cool is like with TikTok, like you don't necessarily have to have a presence to you don't necessarily have to have a presence like your music can kind of speak for itself and make its wave on there. Um, but if it does kind of work out or if it does kind of move, um, you know, obviously creating your own account and building your own story on TikTok as well. Um, as I mentioned, like, you know, you can get started today and literally just start posting once a day. And, you know, in the next three months, like you could have thousands of followers like pretty easily. Um, and I'm not even I'm not even exaggerating that. And so, um, you know, I think like taking advantage of just the platform right now and it's like uh, organic reach. So, um, you know, just just being a part of the story, like if your your song's going and jumping on TikTok as well. Um, and then you got like, you know, I think somebody to highlight for me is like a Lil Nas X where he's just so good at like internet culture and just like creating his own content uh and using his own music smartly in it not just like check out my song but like using his song in context with how tiktok works uh so kind of like jumping on all those ideas i said earlier like you know a uh, certain sound or a certain clap or a certain word in his own music that he uses as uh, a tiktok trend and so um i think that that's super important and then there's a ton of spillover from TikTok into all these other places like YouTube and Instagram and stuff. So I think as like an indie artist, um, like if you're not on TikTok, I think you're gonna miss this really important window uh, into creating your own content and jumping on, um, aside from like just pushing your own music on there, um, which you should too. So, um, you know, I think that that's just like super, super important. Yeah. And, you know, I want to touch on something that you you kind of mentioned a little bit earlier. Right. Uh, understanding what type of presence that you can have on TikTok. Right. I think, um, you know, you just said like you can not necessarily have a profile, but let your music spread on there. In your opinion, what other types of presences are there to, to take advantage of on TikTok? You know, um, right. you can have the little Nas X approach. You can have another approach, I guess, kind of in your opinion. What have you seen? Yeah. Yeah, like if you're not like if you're not trying to be like funny or do skits or you're not creative in that way, that's totally fine because there's a ton of people that like what's cool is, you know, you have music on TikTok that people use for their audios and their videos. And then also if you just make a video yourself uh, and post it, people can still use that sound. So let's say, you know, I'm uh, recording myself on my phone. Uh, with the guitar and just like singing and uh you know singing to the camera and posting that video people can go and actually use my audio from that video so i think like you know i've seen rappers uh i'll get actually i'll get into that a little bit differently or later but um but i think just like making like you know stripped down versions and posting that and people being able to use your sound um you know little tj did a great job recently where it's like 
he recorded himself previewing his new song calling my phone in December. Um, and people just started using that audio kind of just what I touched on and had like 130,000 videos. And now when he released it, you know, it came out to number three this week. And I think that they just did a great job of like building that song up by him just previewing stuff on mute, uh, on TikTok. Um, and then another thing I want to highlight is like, uh, what I was going to mention was like, there's this producer Kato on the track who, you know, made this beat on TikTok, um, and he just posted it and he just asked people to duet him, uh, in freestyle. And this girl jumps on this girl just literally freestyled, you know, did a voiceover. So it's like his beat. And then she's freestyling to her mic on camera. The, the, the audio gets like a hundred thousand videos and they go and record the actual song and put it out. I think it has like over a million streams now. Um, and so like, there's a way to still, you know, you know, be funny, do the trends on TikTok. If you're not into that, like do stuff with music because people can use your sounds or, you know, like, I don't think, I don't think you should take TikTok too seriously. Sometimes like it can be sometimes treated as like an IG story of like just what you're doing uh, or things like that, or like what you're doing in your day and just recording it and um, things like that. So, you know, there's a ton of different uh, things to do on TikTok outside of like, hey, I don't want to do these trends or I don't want to dance on TikTok. Well, the good news is that there's tons of other stuff that works uh, for you. And so, you know, even taking, uh, if you do shoot a music video, for example, like taking a clip, a 15 second clip from your video and posting it on TikTok enables people to potentially use your song uh, from that video. And then also just like has a, a cool piece of content on TikTok. You know what? And it, it, what's really interesting, I think, you know, you, you kind of touched on it um, w without saying it right. Is like this idea of interactivity. Right. Um, and so I guess kind of for you guys, um, you know, how, how do you guys ensure that each piece of content that you create kind of on the, the front facing side of, of Flight House has this this moment of interactivity or does every video need to have that? Or, you know, does it you know, how, how do you I guess how do you guys kind of go about uh, approaching interactivity and how important that is? Um, when developing content. Yeah, I, I don't think you have to, but I think like, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong on inter uh, understanding what interactivity is, but like, I think you can feed off comments very well. Um, and like, you know, let's say you create content like people, uh, I've seen people's accounts literally being built off uh, someone being like, yo, like, let's say they're doing a cover song. Um, you know, they'll do like people will comment like, hey, you should do this song next. And then the next video they do, you can reply to comments in a video form. And so you can have the comment like on the video, like telling them, you know, and it says what song that that person requested. Um, and then I, I feel like that's feeding off of like what they're telling you. And then people are like, oh, this person's like, you know, um, reading our comments and actually doing the things we're talking about where we feel listened and so more people will comment like yo you should do this song you should do this song and uh i've seen people that do like um a dance a dance trend and people are telling them in what locations to do it at and then they keep feeding off of that and uh and it works super well so i think like you don't have to but i think that there's definitely a lot of um uh opportunities to do so um with our own content uh you know, I, we read comments as well, but I, you know, I don't think we, we, we do it as much uh, in our own. Yeah. Yeah. No. So, okay. Let's say the music starts going up. You really start to build this presence. How do you sustain, right? Like what is the, what is the key to sustainability on, you know, a platform like this? And, and how do you kind of go about it? How do you make sure that you're not somebody who's always just trying to chase a hit, but maybe yeah. it's, it's something that, you know, you, you do want to have a, a long, a long-term stay here. How do you go about sustainability and how do you guys think about that? Yeah, I think it's like, it, it's it's hard work, obviously, um, just being consistent. Uh, as I mentioned earlier as well, like, uh, so I, I'm actually in this challenge with my with my body and um, it's like a 30 day challenge and I was, and he has his own brand uh, and he makes content on TikTok. And I was like, your 30 day challenge is just post one TikTok a day. and you know, we're at like day 45 now we we've extended it and he's, he's gained like 4,000 followers since then, uh, of just literally posting once a day. And so I think like just being super consistent, uh, trying new things out in your content, um, you know, for, for flight house, for example, we used to make a certain type of content. Uh, you know, one day we were like, we should try this new format. 
where we have a backdrop and we play this like game called finish the TikTok lyric and see what happens. And that exploded. And we're like, all right, cool. Like there's something, there's like some principles within this content that we created. Um, let's try to take those into some other formats and things like that. So I think just being consistent, trying new things. Um, if something's working, continuing with that. Uh, if something's not working, maybe stop doing that. Um, and I think like just a tip for like building yourself and, and let's say you're like, well, what do I post every day? Um, you know, there's tons of just trending sounds every day that you can use. Um, there's just so much stuff going on that you can pull inspo from. Um, and you know, with music, like I think, I think in, in Lil Nas X does it well too. Um, but I think just like having that you know, balance of like just pushing your own music and like, you know, using other types of music on TikTok is important too and other types of trends and uh, and not just check out my music, check out my music, but kind of having uh, a lot of different content formats, you know, for your own page. And so, um, yeah, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm curious too, like, you know, when you look at TikTok, who are, I guess, kind of who are you looking at who's doing it the best, right? Like, who are some of the, um, I guess, just kind of the profiles or, or even just the artists or, or whatever um, that you're looking at and you're saying, okay, they're doing it the right way because, and then, yeah. we, you know. Yeah, as I mentioned, Lil Nas, I think, I think the golden child is 24K golden. Like, he's just doing such a great job at, in you know, he's broke off TikTok now and, uh, and he just did such a great job at utilizing the platform, uh, creating a lot of content, being very contextual, um, you know, not just using his own music, um, you know, and he's been able to build himself. And also um, I see him doing like doing anything possible to get to that next level. Uh, you know, early on um, when, he, when he didn't even have any pop and songs on TikTok, like or I think he had Valentino, which was pretty big on TikTok, but, you know, not a lot of people still knew him. And, you know, I see him start to reach out to all these creators and, you know, there's creators on TikTok that, um, for example, I forgot this guy's name, but he does, uh, a, he does keyboard and does like that tube thing um, where he sings into it. And like, I saw 24K just like go hang out with him and make content and uh, collaborate. And so I think that that's important. Um, so I think like 24K Golden is probably like, the pinnacle of like doing TikTok content. And then I would say Nolan X is next. Um, Tate McRae does a really good job um, at being, uh, you know, present on TikTok, doing her thing, pushing her own music, but also, you know, just being on TikTok and being contextual to the platform. And, uh, you know, when you watch her content or all these other people I mentioned, like you see that they go on TikTok, right? And they're like doing things that like, it's not just like some, IG thing getting pulled to TikTok. It's like TikTok content. Um, and I think that that's really important. Um, I'm trying to think of some others. I know Lil TJ has been doing a good job lately. Kid Leroy is doing a good job. Um, yeah, I'll just start with those. Yeah, yeah, no, that's solid, that's solid. And, you know, I'm curious too, um, you know, kind of in your in your opinion, I mean, for as long as you've been doing this, what are some of kind of the the misconceptions about TikTok and, and how have you kind of been able to either um, address those misconceptions or debunk some of these myths, especially, uh, you know, kind of being uh, on the ground uh, and, and doing this day in and day in and day out. Yeah. A um, couple misconceptions I would say is uh, as far as your song being on TikTok, it doesn't have to be the chorus. Um, there's been tons of intro, you know, we're just look. It, you just need a fifteen second clip that's good for TikTok. The core, if if the trend idea is like within the chorus, that's the best, obviously, because it's like the catchiest part of the song. Also has the best part for TikTok on air, um, so that's great. But uh, it could be from the intro, it could be from the outro, it could be from the breakdown that works on TikTok. So I think misconception for sure is like doesn't need to be the chorus of your song to put up on TikTok. Um, other misconceptions is it's not just a dance app our lip sync app there's a ton of different content on there um and music can be used in so many different ways on there and so it's not just you know figuring out those dances or whatever um another misconception mis misconception is i think um a lot of people i wonder if it's still as big as a misconception as it was like last year but 
uh, people didn't think that like slow songs worked on TikTok. Uh, and I remember like, I, I think, I think Rolling Stone reached out to me or something and they were just, they were like, uh, writing an article about it. But like, um, I think everyone assumes that the fast paced song that can be a dance is what should go on TikTok. But like, there's tons of like slow, sad music. Like it's just, it's just a platform that people want to make content to. And not everyone want, wants to necessarily make happy music or a dance. Like they want to do a, a, a video that's sad. Uh, because that's something that's speaking to them in that moment. So, um, you know, if you have a song that can just be a good soundtrack for those kinds of things, it still works. So um, I would say like those are probably like the biggest misconceptions that I've. Um, oh, another misconception I think I addressed it earlier is like uh, you don't have to go to the biggest creators to start trends or things like that. As I said, like majority of the trends don't start from these huge creators and they start from um you know these creative smaller creators so uh you know you don't need a, a ton of money to um you know get your song off the ground on tiktok um and i do want to address like you like with tiktok you don't need a uh, great quality of video right like people it's pretty raw people are using iphone like you don't you don't need the excuse of like, yo, I need someone to film me or whatever. Like you can literally just, you know, really bad quality videos like do well on TikTok. So uh, I think like needing a, a, a good setup or anything like that is definitely something that's just so not needed. Um, so, yeah. 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 No, that's perfect. And, uh, you know, we're probably going to go into the, the last couple of questions. So, uh, you know, for those who are watching, uh, you know, please feel free to, to start throwing your, your questions in the chat. But, um, you know, one thing I was really interested in and, and wanted to kind of break down a little bit, is, especially on the, the agency side of, of Flat House was um, Sunday Sunday Best, right? I think the way that you guys kind of went about that and, and was able to kind of take it from, I think it was like 200 daily plays to like over 2 million. What was that, what was that campaign process, right? What was the thought process? What was like, the the flight house mindset and saying okay this is how we're going to take this song from point a to point b um and and i guess kind of reverse engineering that yeah so it, it went from 200k a day so it was it was a decent song right still had like 20 million streams um i mean it was obviously a great song where now it's at like i, I think it's at like almost 800 million or something which is insane but um yeah, I think, uh, you know, basically on TikTok, there's a lot of these like custom sounds and things like that. Um, you know, it's it's less right now on, on what I'm about to talk on, but there used to be these trends where it was like, hey, yo, boyfriend check, and then this like song plays. And then everyone's like, oh, I use this audio to show my boyfriend off. Um, and then that song just gets like stuck in this trend. And so we basically just took that concept and it was like November of 2019 and it's just like if you listen to sunday best it's such a feel good song and and you know the, literally the lyrics go feeling good like i should and so we're just like sitting there ideating and we're like you know what like it's about to be december like every year on every social platform like people like to show what they did that previous year like their favorite videos their favorite photos things like that so we were like this is just like a great soundtrack for that so let's make this custom sound um and so one of the girls i was working with she recorded herself and she goes 2019 rewind and then plays a rewind sound and then the song plays and so everyone's like all right cool like they know how to use it right away they're like this is that this is this is the song that i use to show my 2019 uh my favorite videos my favorite pictures so um, you know, started with some like mid-level creators, smaller creators, like no one really big or anything like that. Um, and it started to move. And after like a few days, um, you know, probably had like 500 videos after we spent not too much. And so we're like, all right, there's something like really happening here. Um, and as December started going closer and closer to January, the velocity of everyone wanting to show what they did that previous year um, started to really, really catch on. Uh, and so, yeah, by like mid January, it was probably at like 500,000 videos. Um, and, uh, you know, the budget started pretty small and just like kept increasing, like as it was working. Um, and I think that that's how a lot of labels and a lot of people are doing it. You know, if something's working, like let's pump more into this. If it's not working, we could probably stop. 
Uh, and so, yeah, once it started taking off, you know, by mid January, we're like, all right, how much longer are people going to want to keep showing their 2019 stuff? So we're like, we need to like, we need to like reiterate or, uh, I don't know the word, but like, we need to make something new. Um, and so now that the song is already popular, that opens up this window of, uh, a lot of like, you can just, you just take right now, if you go on TikTok, you'll find popular songs and then you'll find the slow versions of them, or you'll find, uh, two popular songs mashed up together. Or if there's like, yeah, like two popular songs out of dances, the audio will be mashed together and then people will just do both dances together. So we like understood that that's kind of like, it's kind of just normal how music is, you know, if a song's working, let's go get an artist and make a remix. So it's like, basically just like creating those new things to keep its life going. Uh, so we made this remix um, and and made the song into a dance song by adding those new elements, kind of like how I touched on earlier. You know, we added, um, you know, extra hits or things like that, that people can then use for a dance on TikTok. And then that audio got to like 20 million. Um, and then we took that and another popular audio and mashed those up and that got 10 million. So we just like kept its life going and like Justin Bieber jumped on it, Dua Lipa, Neymar, like I was tripping, uh, but that was super cool. So um, that was kind of like how that all happened. And, you know, I think like, just if you have a popular song on, on TikTok, like you are able to keep re making new versions of it. And time and time again, what I'm seeing is like, people don't mind. And, and let's say you don't even make a remix, people don't mind to continue to use the song as long as like something's new, maybe there's a new trend. Um, obviously trends have lives and once it dies, it's like, all right, what's the next kind of thing to do? So we could still keep using that audio if we bring something new or we can go make a remix um, of it. And so, um, you know, a lot of like, No Idea by Don Tolliver was broken on TikTok by actually a slowed version of it first. Um, and that's what really, really took it on. So, um, yeah i think that that's like a it, it's really cool it was a song that was out for a year already so it was doing 200,000 streams a day but on TikTok it was dead uh you know it was on it i think it released january of 2019 and so this was november december of 2019 so like that opens up like that just shows hey anything's at play now you know if you have a uh an older song a newer song a classic song that already had its moment you know uh 50 years ago 20 years ago like uh there's it still can have a life on TikTok, so it's pretty cool yeah absolutely absolutely uh and so you know i think my my, my final question for you is you know let's say uh you know an independent artist comes to you and, and they're asking for advice what advice do you give to somebody uh who wants to go out and start their TikTok presence tomorrow what is that kind of applicable advice that one piece of advice you would give to somebody first day or first, first moment when you wake up Hold on what you should do yeah yeah i think uh step one is just going on tiktok and scrolling and getting used to it uh and just seeing what's working what's not like be a student of like what's going on um and uh and figure out ways to create content uh on there you know like i mentioned if you're down to do the trends if you're a, if you're down to dance if you're down to do the things because like with tiktok like there's content basically being made for you if you think about it like all these trends are ideas that somebody was sitting in their room to figure out how do i use this song and they figured it out for you and then now you can go do it but you can just add the twist to your own that that fits you right like uh if i'm gonna put text on trend i'm gonna use a scenario that i've been in myself so that it's authentic to me and i can bring something new to the trend um, and so like, that's the easiest thing is like hop on the trends and like do something new within those trends. Um, so like, I would say, you know, definitely go study TikTok, uh, and then, you know, don't, don't overthink it. I think just, um, start making content and just start figuring out like what's working, what's not. And like, go find creators as I think also just go find creators, like as you're on there, find creators that you actually like and just see what they're doing. Uh, and, and copy their moves like straight up. Uh, and, and of course, like I said, like be authentic to yourself with what, what, within whatever they're doing, but like 
but like study from the people that are doing it that you really like on the platform. Um, you know, go look at other artists, go look at other creators and see what they're doing and, and go emulate it and, and, and try to figure out, uh, and, and also like what, you know, what kind of value can you bring? Um, I don't know, maybe you're an artist that like loves to give advice on something or like loves to like, I don't know, do satisfying videos. Like just try to see what content kind of is popping on TikTok that you can, um, that you like and, and go like, go copy the moves straight up. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's perfect, man. That's perfect. Thank you so much, man. Uh, okay. I think we're ready to, um, to open it up for Q and a from the audience. So um, we'll just kind of get the, get the first question queued up. Um, so what kind of content that's repurposed from an artist does well on TikTok? Um, I've seen music videos do well. Um, I've seen like skits do well. Um, yeah, this kind of like is, uh, I kind of mentioned, but like, just make sure you're like contextual to the platform. Um, if you're going to post some, uh, if you're going to post something on TikTok, that's just like, like I said, step one, figuring out like kind of what's going on on TikTok. Uh, Cause you don't want to be like that person that comes on and just starts using content from like all this other stuff. That's just like, doesn't fit TikTok. Like you just want to know how it kind of works. Uh, so I've seen music videos work. Uh, I've seen like clips from, let's say you have a vlog, um, you know, finding 15 second moments within those to, to post. Um, skits like i mentioned on instagram i've seen stuff get carried over and work um you know i think like the attention span on tick i mean with everyone it's getting lower and lower but TikTok, like on average the videos are a lot like shorter so uh you know i would say like if you do have like a longer form piece of content like let's say you're a gamer as well like uh taking like clips of you uh, playing a game and not posting the minute long one, but maybe like 15, 30 seconds, maybe 10 seconds. Uh, so just fitting it more onto the platform. But I think if you have like a longer form, con like longer form content, whether it's a vlog or you're streaming or a music video, like just figuring out the clips that you can bring to TikTok, uh, is, is, is something that like I've seen work. Would experimenting different types of formats as a creator, uh, would that would that affect directly your brand or is it important to be as creative as possible? I think uh, I think you got to experiment like. How are you going to know what content works if like like let's say you make one piece of content and it doesn't work like. You, you got to like come up with something new for sure. So I think like definitely experimenting and like, I just think step one or like the most important thing is like being authentic. Uh, if you're just gonna like do stuff that's just not you just because you necessarily, like you've seen it work or whatever, like it's not gonna work for you if it's just not authentic. So I think like uh, that's really important, but I think experimenting, like how else are you, how else would Flighthouse have known, finished the TikTok lyric would have, worked if like we didn't just try something uh you know i think that like i can't even with music like people experimenting with the the style that they're making like experimentation is super important so i think uh it's definitely you should definitely experiment um will it affect your brand like if you're gonna experiment with something that's totally like not authentic to you yeah i think i think you should but as long as like you're being you in whatever context like that is your brand, like you're you. So, um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, there's a lot of conversation about the TikTok algorithm and how it always changes. Uh, how much as creators on TikTok should we be paying attention to the changes in the algorithm? For sure. I think, uh, and I think the only way to know that is by, well, one, studying the For You page, like what are you seeing? Um, and then by, posting and trying different times to post uh you know i know retention rates a big thing on tiktok so you know making sure that um you know make a video that plays into the retention rate stuff so i think i think it's super important obviously because you want your videos to hit the for you page so you're seen by more people and so uh you know i think that that's where experimentation also comes into 
uh, and figuring it out. But um, but I think like, yeah, it's super important in staying on top of it. And I, the only way to, to stay on top of it is by trying new things, by being consistent and posting a lot. If you're never posting, how, how are you supposed to know if anything has changed? Um, so yeah, you should definitely um, be trying new things and figuring out kind of how TikTok's working. Let's see. Okay, what if your videos aren't on the For You page for people, uh, for the people who view, do you keep posting to be relevant or are hashtags more important? I think every video hits the For You page at some capacity. And then whether that video is interacted with is important to have it like get to that next step. I think that TikTok like automatically just pushes your video out to a certain amount of people. And then like whether that video is good, fits the platform well, is using a trending sound, it might show it to more and more people. Um, so um, it always hits it at, at some capacity. Um, I think hashtags definitely help. I don't, I'm not going to sit here and tell you like uh, what to do with hashtags. I t I'm totally not uh, I'm not too sure on like what hashtags, how many things like that. Uh, obviously there's people that are doing it and I've heard people say that it works as well. So, but I don't want to lie. Like I, I'm not too sure. Um, and then I think, um, something I've noticed is like, even if you don't have a hashtag, but you wrote something in the caption, that's a way for your videos to be found as well, because people will type stuff in the search bar and then, uh, it'll show you videos based on, what somebody wrote in the caption or uh, things like that. So I think that that's another way to be found. Um, and then I think like as, as like a creator, definitely uh, I think using the trending sounds is somewhat as, as a way for your to not ensure that the video would do better, but it definitely has like a higher chance of doing better if you're using the, the trending sounds. So um, I would focus on that definitely. When reaching out to TikTok influencers, um, is it smarter to have all of them post the same video concept or have them all try different concepts to see which trends, which trends pops off first? Yeah, that's a good question. And I think that that's something that is a ongoing question. And um, we've done both, both have worked. Um, I think that if you only push one video concept, you're at the mercy of that one idea uh, and so that could be a disadvantage, but I've definitely had trends go like, I think we worked, um, it was, it was lemonade by internet money. And it was just a concept that I came up with and that just worked. I just, I don't know. I just felt like it would and went after it. Um, but there's tons of other songs where we have multiple ideas or we are like, let's just give the song to creators to do their thing and see kind of what works. And then should, can we build off that? So um, I've seen both work, um, but if you don't really know what you to do yourself, uh, I would probably rely more on the creators that have a big following on TikTok to be able to uh, help you create a concept. Let's see, I do freestyles to other people's beats, new and old. Will that be good content for TikTok? Totally. If you're fire, shit's going to work. Like I said, there was that song, uh, what is it called? I think I wrote it down. Um, anyways, I don't want to waste time. But uh, by Kato and this girl, and I think it's called I'm So Pretty. And like I said, she freestyled over. She never even made a song before, and she freestyled on this beat, and it popped the fuck off and became a song. So, uh, yeah, I think so. If you're really bad, maybe not. But if you're good, then uh, yeah, dude. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Are you encouraging uh, touring artists to delete and repost uh, or totally delete some of their TikTok because it didn't work? Or are you encouraging your artists? I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, no, I no. I think like uh, TikTok has this like 90 day. This is what I'm told. And I was on a panel earlier as well and having this conversation and TikTok has this like 90 day period um, where once you post, let's say it doesn't work right away. Like there's still like this 90 days where like it still is getting pushed to people on the for you page and stuff. And so you've, you can have an old video pop off 
Uh, there's been accounts that we've ran for other brands and, and stuff like that too, where like we posted something and it didn't work right away. And like weeks later it took off. Um, so I definitely don't think that you should uh, delete and repost. I also heard that reposting I've, this is where it's weird because I've heard from TikTok, don't repost uh, a video because of their, I don't know, AI or whatever that like can hurt it. But then I've seen other people that delete and repost their video and ends up doing better. I don't, I wouldn't recommend it necessarily, but I, I guess I've seen it work, but um, yeah, hopefully that, that that's helpful. Gotcha. Uh, let's see. Are the hashtags important when trying to reach the for you page or does it automatically place you in hash or does it automatically pl place you? Uh, yeah, I think it just automatically pushes you in the, in the, in the for you page. I don't think you need to have a hashtag. I think that's just another way to, for people to find you. But the, you know, with IG, like if you have zero followers and you use a hashtag, like that's how people can find you on TikTok. your stuff's getting pushed. So you don't need it. Um, you can just create content without it. I do TikTok trends very globally. Totally. Um, yeah, I mean, like there's just the, it's culture, right? Like cultures are the same, are different everywhere. So um, definitely there's stuff that's in Asia that's not going to work here, but there are definitely some trends that like make that crossover. Uh, there's recently this Russian song that like really popped off, uh, blew up like in Russia, I think, and then, you know, made its way over here. Um, you know, um, this siren beat, uh, that's like the biggest TikTok song ever that Jason Drew ended up popping on. Uh, that I think blew up in a different country and then came over to the U S. Um, so yeah, I think the trends definitely vary globally. And then some of them, you know, end up making their crossover to other places. Um, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Um, well, I think that is, I think that's it for questions. Um, so, you know, Adi, thank you so much, um, for, for taking the time. Um, if there's any, you know, last minute thoughts you want to leave, uh, leave us with, please feel free. Um, but, you know, again, I just want to say thank you so much for, for your time and for kind of, uh, you know, just giving us your insights. Yeah. No, thank you. Thanks to United Masters. Uh, this was fun. So, yeah. And, and thanks for everyone that tuned in. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Thank you guys so much. Oh. Uh, this has been United Masters, the TikTok playbook. Um, until the next time. Appreciate you guys.